Welcome back to part two. So I am actually going to be going over just real quickly those practices, right? So the last scripture that we read in the first part was um, Psalm 73, 23 through 25. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel and afterward you will take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. So this is where I kind of want to teach a little bit is um, whom have I in heaven but you, right? Now, if you know David and you've read David, if you haven't, you know, just read all throughout Psalms, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, look up the books that are written by David, right? But I'm really more so talking about Psalms because David was very expressed as we're able to see his intimacy with God a lot in Psalms, you know, through how he worships and how he prays and things like that. So, but David... He was a man after God's heart. He was a man of intimacy, right? So he said, whom have I in heaven but you? And who, there is none I desire on earth besides you. I know I keep reading that, but it's for a reason. It's because that is pretty intense. That is a pretty big statement to say. There is none on earth I desire besides you. Now, we know all of Scripture is true. So you or I may say in one of our, well, we're on fire, feeling on fire for God, and we're all in faith. We may say, you know, there is none on earth I desire besides you, God. But then later on, when our boyfriend or our girlfriend breaks up with us, you know, our world falls apart. So there is someone in something that we desire in the earth besides the Lord, more than the Lord, right? So to live for only one, to live for only one. To live unto the Lord is what we're getting at today. So one of the things we have to do in order to attain this intimacy with God is we have to, that statement has to become true of us. There is whom have I in heaven but you and there is none I desire in the earth besides you. Whoa. Now if that's true, then intimacy has definitely been gained, right? So John talks about if we love the world, then the love of the Father is not in us, right? So in order to attain this intimate place in God, we have to divorce our love with the world, right? Now, the Bible says that all that is in the world is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride in life, right? Those are the three things. That's all he said. It's so simple, right? But it's so consuming because that, that can look like so many things. The lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes, and the pride in life, right? That is all that is in the world, in the world system, right? That's what's in the world system. So if we're going to live outside of the world system, then we have to live in another system, and that system is God's system. That's the kingdom. That's, that's his will. That's his plan. That's his presence, right? So John talks about how if we love the world, right, then the love of the Father is not in us. So I'm going to connect this to what David said. Whom have I in heaven but thee? There is none on earth that I desire besides thee. So he had literally blocked everything out as far as desire is concerned. And he said, there, you are the only one I want in the earth. So examine your life, you know, and say, you know what, God? There are places where I, the love of the world is still in me. So I know the love of the Father cannot be in me. There is not an ounce of doubt in me that Jesus did not, hate the world system. He hated the world system. He loved the Father, right? And so the world, it had nothing on him. You know, the world could not find anything on him because there was no hooks in Jesus for the world to latch on to because the love of the Father was inside of him. And this is possible for you. This is possible for me. You may say, you know, I don't know how I'm struggling so much. All you have to do is fall in love with the Father. All you have to do, don't focus on you know, oh, this is worldly and that is worldly. And just focus on your love for the Father. And those things, you will begin to remove those worldly things and habits and appetites. They will begin to change as you fall in love with the Father and you fall in love with His presence. His presence. And you see, you may say, well, I don't know what that is. I never encountered that. I've read scriptures. I don't know what the presence of God is. Then ask the Lord. Ask the Lord, Lord, I want to feel your presence and believe. Believe like a child. Remember, God loves faith. I mean, what's the worst that you could, what's the worst that you could lose? I remember when I was first kind of like really starting to pray in faith, you know, 
I did this thing where I practiced believing every single thing with my whole heart, just as long as I, just for as long as I prayed it. And then afterwards, if I had some doubts, then I would just like, okay, you know, but for as long as I prayed it, I believed it as if it was going to happen. Like, like right now, if I were to pray, like, Lord, let the clouds, it's cloudy outside today. I could pray, you know, Lord, let the clouds open up in Jesus name and my heart can fully believe it. Right. And I just practice faith, practice faith. You know, and even on impossible things, even on things that you may think oh, God would never answer me for that. Hey, you never know, right? Practice faith, practice faith. Now, again, I'm not talking about practicing faith on things that are not God's will for us to have or just our own selfishness that we want. Practice faith in praying what God's word already wants you to have. Okay. So anyways, let's get back to the, so what we're practicing. So we're practicing, practice number one is practicing, examining, you know, what are the things that I, I can't live without besides God? What are those things that right now, if they got removed from my life, that I just don't know how I would deal? I don't know how I would hang. I don't know how I would keep it together if I lost those things, right? Now, there is people and things in our life that we are going to love deeply, right? And that love should remain. I'm not telling you to unlove people, unlove things, you know, definitely not. But I'm saying that if, you know, our world is built in uh, on temporary relationships, on temporary things, right? Then, then we know that God is not our everything. I want to say this really quickly because I, I, this is something the Lord told me this week. He said, I am the only one who ever promised to not leave you or forsake you. He said, no one else has ever promised you that, that has the ability to not lie. So think about that. So the Bible says that he cannot lie, right? It's it's just impossible for God to lie. It's not in his nature. He's incapable of lying. You and me, we're not incapable of lying. The person we dearly love the most is not incapable of lying, right? So God the Father, the one who is the only one incapable of lying and telling a lie, told us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And that is the one person that we are quick, the quickest to ignore. Because we can't see him in the natural. Even though he explains himself. He says, I am the invisible God. <laughs> he even says he's invisible. and But he also says he will never leave us nor forsake us. Right? But that is the first relationship that we surpass and we run past when, we're, when, when, when we need him the most. And that is the one relationship that is never going anywhere. That is the one person that is dedicated to you throughout your whole life in the earth and even after this earth. He is the only one that will never leave. The only one that will never leave in reality. Now you and I have had people that told us, I will never leave you. I'm always going to be with you. I'm always going to love you. I'm always going to. And then what happened to some of them? Some of them did not stay. Some of them stayed, right? God is the only one who promises that he will never leave you nor forsake you and the only one that can deliver on that promise. So that is one we must pay attention to. We must prioritize that relationship above all other relationships in this earth. Okay, number two. So um, just to preface it really quick, so I'm going to talk about David because um, we're kind of going off David. There's none on the earth I desire besides you. That's a, a scripture by David. So, but one thing, there's another scripture, and I'll write it in the comments below. Um, he, the Bible says, you know, pour out your heart before the Lord. It's in Psalms. Pour out your heart before the Lord. Now, let me tell you something about David. David was an expert at pouring his heart out before the Lord, right? So, David may seem in scripture like he was always in turmoil, like he was always going through, like, oh my gosh, I would never want that life. <laughs> He was always going through something, right? His enemies chasing him down, him praying, crying out to God, God, have you forsaken me? You know, my enemies are chasing me down. He was always, always in turmoil from what we see in Psalms. And, and, and except for the times that he was, you know, praising God and lifting God and glorifying God, which there was a lot of that as well, right? But there was a lot of him saying, God, you know, my soul is downcast within me. You know what I mean? And it may seem like, dang, David has some problems. But guess what? Let me tell you something. You know, he didn't have any more problems than you and I have. He didn't. He just had a revelation 
of pouring his heart out to God. Because guess what? You and I are in the same amount of turmoil every single day. We just have not yet practiced pouring our hearts out to God. But guess what? David resolved to make the Lord his refuge. He resolved to pour his heart out to God and make him his secret place and said, God, you are my sanctuary. I will confide in you. You will be my refuge. I will pour my heart out before you until you are the only one who is my strong tower right? I will not put my hope in money. I will not put my hope in people. Jesus said, I, full, I put my trust fully in no man because I knew the, I know the hearts of man. So Jesus knew the hearts of man. So he didn't entrust his, himself fully to any man. I would say this is the biggest thing that we do as human beings, right? Is we fully entrust ourselves to people when they are not God. We fully entrust our happiness to our spouse. And then, and then when they, we found out they cheat on us or we found out they told a lie, God forbid. I mean, we don't want these things to happen, but we're human beings, okay? We are but deaths. We need to have an accurate perception of who we are, right? And that we are sinful beings. And it is only through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit that can make us holy, right? So we're the moment something trips up in this relationship or that relationship, we're crumbling. Our worlds are falling apart and we don't know know what to do because we fully put our trust in man when we should know the hearts of man like the bible says this doesn't mean you don't trust people i'm not saying that don't get me wrong at all this is two totally different kinds of trust i'm talking about here because the bible says love always trusts you are supposed to trust but to put your full happiness and put your full hope in a human being or an organization it is just asking for un, you know unwarranted pain and woundedness you know, we are to put our whole heart, our whole trust in the Lord. Put your hope in the Lord. He will never let you down. Put your trust in the Lord. He will never leave you. He is faithful. His nature is trustworthy. He is the only one that deserves protection and oversight over your entire heart. So we have to practice and get good at pouring our hearts out before the Lord like David did. Okay, so those are our practices. So those are the things I want you to practice with. Hopefully, if you're like, whoa, this video kind of came out of nowhere, there's a first one. So there's a part one. This is part two. So just watch both of them, you know. Um, so these are our practices. So remember, our topic was intimacy. So I just kind of want to leave you with some practices, some basic things to live out. So the first practice, just recapping, was, you know, going over the things that, that we love in this world system. You know, what, what, what part of me is attached to the world, right? And how do I detach myself from the world? You know, and remember, falling in love with the presence of God is going to naturally change your appetites to get you to want to get those things out of your life, right? Because it's literally like when you're falling in love with a person and that person doesn't like certain things you don't want to do those certain things because you want that person to stay around it's the same thing it's intimacy with the holy spirit okay and the second part was practice pouring your heart out so i'll leave you with this so just practice it this week you know when you're going through something or even when you're extremely happy and you're in the car and maybe you just got a raise or you know something just happened that you know you you just got a new dog or i don't know something or you're troubled you don't know how to talk to this friend just begin to talk to the lord to say lord right now i come before you in jesus name lord god i just I don't know what to do about this friend. I think I hurt their feelings. Lord, was I wrong? Please show me. You know, just literally talking to God, literally talking to him, pouring your heart out to him, making him your refuge. So I hope that this blessed you. I hope that this touched you. And I'm just going to pray over you, okay? So Lord, I just thank you right now for every single person watching, Lord God. Father, I thank you that you desire to give us that revelation of whom have I in heaven but thee, and there is none on earth I desire besides thee. Oh, Lord God, you are beautiful. You are so beautiful, Lord God. Father, I pray that each and every person watching would have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. They would have an encounter with your glorious presence, God, and that they would begin to cultivate an atmosphere of your presence in their everyday lives, God. Father, be near to us. Holy Spirit, let our ears be opened. Let our eyes be opened up, Lord God, to see your beauty. Let our ears be opened up to hear your voice. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.